The insurgency in Jammu and Kashmir, also Kashmiri insurgency, or Kashmir Intifada, is against the Indian administration of Jammu and Kashmir, a region constituting the southern portion of the larger Kashmir region, which has been the subject of a dispute between India and Pakistan since 1947. Jammu and Kashmir, long a breeding ground of separatist ambitions, has been racked by the insurgency since 1989. Although the failure of Indian governance and democracy lay at the root of the initial disaffection, Pakistan played an important role in converting the latter into a fully developed insurgency. Some insurgent groups in Kashmir support the complete independence, whereas others seek accession to Pakistan. More explicitly, the roots of the insurgency are tied to a dispute over local autonomy. Democratic development was limited in Kashmir until the late 1970s, and by 1988 many of the democratic reforms provided by the Indian government had been reversed and non-violent channels for expressing discontent were limited and caused a dramatic increase in support for insurgents advocating violent secession from India. In 1987, a disputed state election created a catalyst for the insurgency when it resulted in some of the state's legislative assembly members forming armed insurgent groups. In July 1988, a series of demonstrations, strikes and attacks on the Indian government began the Kashmir insurgency, which during the 1990s escalated into the most important internal security issue in India. Pakistan claims to be giving its moral and diplomatic support to the separatist movement. The Inter-Services Intelligence of Pakistan has been accused by India and the international community of supporting, supplying arms and training Mujahideen to fight in Jammu and Kashmir. In 2015, former President of Pakistan Pervez Musharraf admitted that Pakistan had supported and trained insurgent groups in the 1990s. India has repeatedly called Pakistan to end its cross-border terrorism in Kashmir. Several new militant groups with radical Islamic views emerged and changed the ideological emphasis of the movement to Islamic. This had happened partly due to a large number of Islamic jihadi fighters, Mujahideen, who had entered the Kashmir Valley following the end of the Soviet-Afghan War in the 1980s. The conflict between the militants and the Indian forces have led to large number of casualties. Many civilians have also died as a result of being targeted by the various armed groups. According to official figures released in Jammu and Kashmir Assembly, there were 3,400 disappearance cases, and the conflict has left more than 47,000 people dead which also includes 7,000 police personnel as of July 2009. Some rights groups claim a higher figure of 100,000 deaths since 1989. Since the revocation of the special status of Jammu and Kashmir in August 2019, the Indian military has intensified its counterinsurgency operations. Clashes in the first half of 2020 left 229 dead, including 32 civilians. The 283 people killed in all of 2019 was the highest toll for a decade. Nineteen forty seven to nineteen eighty seven. After independence from colonial rule, India and Pakistan were engaged in a war over the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir. At the end of the war India controlled the southern portion of the princely state. While there were sporadic periods of violence there was no organized insurgency movement. During this period legislative elections in the state of Jammu and Kashmir were first held in 1951 and Sheikh Abdullah's secular party stood unopposed. He was an instrumental member in the accession of the state to India. However, Sheikh Abdullah would fall in and out of favor with the central government and would often be dismissed only to be reappointed later on. This was a time of political instability and power struggle in Jammu and Kashmir, and it went through several periods of president's rule by the federal government. 1987 to 2004. The trend in total yearly civilian and security forces fatalities from insurgency-related violence over 25 years from 1988 to 2013, 65. After Sheikh Abdullah's death, his son Farooq Abdullah took over as chief minister of Jammu and Kashmir. Farooq Abdullah eventually fell out of favor with the central government, and the prime minister Indira Gandhi had his government toppled with the help of his brother-in-law GM Shah. A year later, Abdullah reached an accord with the new prime minister Rajiv Gandhi and announced an alliance with the Indian National Congress for the elections of 1987. 
the elections were allegedly rigged in favor of Abdullah. Most commentators state that this led to the rise of an armed insurgency movement composed, in part, of those who unfairly lost the elections. Pakistan supplied these groups with logistical support, arms, recruits, and training. In the second half of 1989 the alleged assassinations of the Indian spies and political collaborators by the Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front was intensified. Over six months more than a hundred officials were killed to paralyze government's administrative and intelligence apparatus. The daughter of then Interior Affairs Minister, Mufti Muhammad Sayyid was kidnapped in December and four terrorists had to be released for her release. This event led to mass celebrations all over the valley. Farooq Abdullah resigned in January after the appointment of Jugmohan Malhotra as the governor of Jammu and Kashmir. Subsequently, JNK was placed under governor's rule under Article 92 of state constitution. Under JKLF's leadership on 21 to 23 January large-scale protests were organized in the Kashmir Valley. As a response to this largely explosive situation paramilitary units of BSF and CRPF were called.